Okay, we'll look at uh, neurological testing now. And during this phase, we'll be testing um, the ability of the nervous system to transmit and inhibit sig um, signals. The afferent system will test with sensation testing. The um, efferent system with motor testing. We'll test both systems with uh, deep tendon reflexes. And of course, we'll test the ability of the central nervous system to inhibit um, reflexes with deep tendon reflexes, clonus, and the extent of plantar response. Looking at dermatomal testing first, there are a couple of ways of doing this. Um, we can use light touch, where we're looking for almost anesthetic areas over the um, patient's skin. And we can use um, pinprick, where we're looking for hypoesthesia. Now, in all cases of neurological testing, we're actually not just looking for the ability or inability to function, but we're also looking for the distribution of that dysfunction if it exists. For example, does it fall into a segmental pattern which would suggest that the nerve root or spinal nerve is affected? Does it form, fall into the pattern where we can say that it's a peripheral nerve problem or perhaps a trunk problem? Or is it multi or extra segmental where we have to be concerned with the central nervous system? So it's not simply whether or not we get a reflex or whether the muscle contraction is weak or whether they're hypoesthetic, but the pattern of um, how that neurological deficit is being found. So for sensory testing, um, light touch would consist of using a piece of tissue paper um, and just gently dabbing it against the skin and covering as much of the leg as possible with it and asking them whether or not they can feel the sensation um, simply by responding yes whenever they do feel it and us as therapists looking for the lack of a response when we do touch it. We could also use pinprick where we would be more deliberately going along uh, what we perceive as the dermatome and comparing the dermatome on the left to the same dermatome on the right and seeing if they're getting the same amount of sensation um, from that. So looking at light testing first, light touch testing first, ordinary piece of tissue paper would do it and we simply come onto the skin of the leg and we start just dabbing the skin with the tissue paper. And we simply ask the patient, say yes whenever you feel this. And close your eyes as well so you don't cheat. Yes. 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 And you cover as much of the skin as you can. And we're waiting for when there's a failure to respond to the touch. When that failure occurs, then we have to go back in with pinprick and map out the hypoesthetic area and look for the, um, the field of sensory loss. Um, pinprick testing uh, can be done with a pinwheel, which is the easiest way of doing it, but with um, AIDS going about now, this is rapidly falling out of favour. And as is pin, using a pin um, to do it, unless we discard the pin. So we need something that's obviously discardable, so we can put the patient at ease, and we can use a paper clip or even a toothpick. Um, and now we'll follow the dermatome and compare the right dermatome to the left. For example, on the left side, we can look at L3 and just go through that dermatome, asking them, does it feel the same as this side? And depending on how coordinated you are, it's actually more sensitive if you test both sides simultaneously and ask them if there's a difference between the two sides. But as you can see, <laughs> I'm not exactly the most um, coordinated of people, and the sensation they get from the right leg is going to be different from what they get on the left, simply because I'm right-handed. If you can avoid that, then bilateral sensory testing is much better. And essentially you compare L3 with L3, L4 with L4, L5 with L5, S1 with S1, and you just go through the whole pattern of the dermatomes. Um, you're going to pick up one of three possible findings. One is um, that it will be hypoesthetic. Now, this is what we would expect with a segmental distribution. If it's a root palsy, though, what we may find is anesthesia throughout the whole of the skin covered by that palsy. If it's um, spinal cord, then it's usually parasitic, and if it's anesthetic, usually that's picked up very early on because they're also quadriplegic. Um, but if it's, an if it's par parasitic or hypoesthetic, then it'll be in a non-segmental distribution.